precious, wonderful Father, right now be glorified, be high and lifted up. We pray your blessing upon each and every one of us right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are always with us. We thank you that Jesus never leaves us. Jesus never forsakes us. And may we learn to hear your voice. May we learn how to minister in your love, minister in your power, minister and show people your nature and your character. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, thank you so much for being part of this pilot program for Entry Level Prophecy. Uh, my name is Jared Lasky, and I am currently in the Virginia Beach area, having the time of my life, married for the last 18 years with four amazing kids. And my wife's name is Rochelle, so if you receive any of the emails from Fireborn Ministries, she's the one that puts those together. She's doing an incredible job with that. Um, but here we are, entry-level prophecy. Um, I'd love to get some feedback uh, and insights on what you guys thought about this as we uh, go through the e-course entry-level prophecy together, which is uh, developing hearing God's voice and prophesying at the beginning stage, because I personally believe that as Christians, we can all hear God and we can all prophesy. Not all of us have uh, can, can be part of a prophetic ministry or grow into the office of prophet, the fivefold ministry office, but God can use all of us to hear his voice and to prophesy, to encourage, comfort, and edify people at the basic beginning entry level of prophecy. So I want you guys to know, I love Jesus. Jesus is so amazing. He's extremely personable. He's extremely loving. And he rescued me from darkness and brought me into his light. His precious Holy Spirit filled me up and transformed me and continues to transform me, continues to fill me. And I can't stop telling people about his love. Ever since I was about 12 or 13, the Lord was speaking to me in prophetic dreams. Even though I was raised in a Christian home and a church, there were was um, the discussion about spiritual gifts and God speaking to us today was minimal. Most of the pastors that came through our local rural church said that God no longer speaks since the Bible was canonized. There's even one pastor that said that um, any spiritual gifts that exist today are demonic. But even as a teenager, I was like, no, that's not true because God's speaking to me. I knew within my heart that God, that, that, that God was speaking to me and that he continues to speak. I just wasn't trained theologically or biblically in that. There was a seed that was planted within me about God speaking in modern times from the dreams that I was receiving. Um, and there was a seed from what my parents, uh, my parents, their names are Alan and Jeanette. And there was a seed from their conversion that was planted in me because they were saved uh, through a series of supernatural events. But then they were discipled to basically think that that experience was only for that moment and that God no longer does things like that on the regular. But I knew that uh, as a teenager, as God was speaking to me, the seed of knowing what God did in my parents' life um, was, was mar marked me for something and it even marked a hunger for me because my dad was uh, in the counterculture in about the, the 70s and going on into the 80s. And when my mom was pregnant with my twin brother and I, they were practicing transcendental meditation. Um, they were searching. My dad was searching more for Jesus. He, he studied with Jehovah's Witnesses. He, he studied with Mormons. He just knew that, that there's something that he needed. He needed Jesus. And so he, he kept studying these things and um, as they searched for supernatural spiritual truth. And so they were seeking uh, God in a number of different ways. And they were practicing transcendental meditation. And there's this evangelist that came to our community and he started pastoring the local church. And even though my parents were counterculture, this evangelist would come over and talk the Bible and open up the scripture with my parents and just keep working on them. Then one Sunday, my parents, while they were attending the church, my dad decided to be water baptized. There was an emphasis on water baptism in, the, in this church. And my parents went forward 
as they felt the Holy Spirit stirring within them, and they stepped forward during the altar call, and then they were water baptized that day. So they were immersed in, in water that day, and they, they went home, and my dad says that he was sharing how he was telling my, my mom, he was saying that he didn't feel any different. He was expecting a feeling. He was expecting something to be different, but he wasn't feeling it. And so uh, he regularly, regularly smoked marijuana. And when he did that, he would send my mom on an errand to go to the store to go buy something. And she left. So he'd asked her to go buy milk or something, something small. And so she left and then he was outside and he said that he, the moment he put the joint up to his mouth, he was, it was as if he was transported to Calvary, to the cross 2000 years ago. And he looked at Jesus and saw Jesus and his bloodied mangled body on the cross and he said it was mutilated beyond recognition as his body was hanging there. But he said he could see the love of Jesus in his eyes. He said that his eyes seemed to be looking into his soul and that they were so full of love that it flooded in him and through him. And then when my dad came out of this supernatural vision, the supernatural experience, he automatically got rid of all the marijuana. He was completely changed, completely transformed. He disposed of, I think he said he'd had a pound of marijuana uh, at that time uh, and just completely changed and, and threw all that away, flushed it or whatever it was that they, they had, had to do to get rid of it. And they told the pastor what had happened. And, and then through this in, encounter, you know, they were welcomed into the church body but yet the church started discipling them in a different direction. But this encounter as a young person taught me that God still speaks. And hearing as a teenager, hearing from my pastor that God doesn't talk to us today was confusing. It was frustrating, especially when God was giving me dreams at 12 or 13 dreams that would happen within a month or dreams that would happen in two months or some some were literal and some some were symbolic and metaphorical but i didn't know what to do and in time i was you know as god continued to speak to me i was terrified but god was still speaking to me as a teenager even when i wasn't serving him like i should be uh my my twin brother and i we got in some trouble as teenagers but our last year of high school we it was like a last chance school for us. Uh, we got in trouble in public school. We did some homeschooling and we're just working construction jobs as teenagers and uh, still doing our thing and, you know, partying and just doing stupid stuff as teenagers. But my twin brother and I started attending a Christian school, our final year of high school. And even though we did a lot of partying, these Christians were different from those that we were raised with. So the, the church that the school was housed in was experiencing uh, overflows from what was known as the Brownsville Revival or even the Toronto Outpouring. And, and my eyes were wide open to these people, I guess, who raised their hands in worship. And uh, I'd never really seen this before in my life. They were charismatics. But the love and grace that they showed my brother and I drew me in. I remember a few times we were out partying with our friends on a, and uh, on a Wednesday evening. So we're, we're partying on a Wednesday and we're bored and we would sneak into this church that the school was housed in and we would watch what was taking place from the balcony of this church, watching what was taking place. And we're, you know, we're stoned out of our minds. We're, you know, we, and we're looking at what's taking place, but even through the haze, the Holy Spirit was working in all of us. Now, in this school, I'd had a few unexplainable moments and in, in a few prayer gatherings in the church, in the, in the school. And there was one time that I gave my first prophetic word over a small group about to go to a Graham Cook prophecy school in England. And I, I remember sitting there and we're kind of like in this circle and there's about 10 or 12 of these students who were getting ready to go on this trip to this prophecy school by Graham Cook in England. And Graham Cook 
he's a prophet of God. He, he rolls in the prophetic office. And these students, some of them were students with me in the school, and they were members of the church and, and that youth group there, were praying over them. And I was just wanting to do my thing, smoke my cigarettes, and, and get high during lunch. Okay, I'm just being honest, being real. So I wasn't serving the Lord like I should, but this, it, this thing came and dropped into me. It's just a phrase. It felt like it went from my head into my chest. And it was a phrase. And I knew I had to speak it. And it was just, it began something like this. We are the awakening. We are the awakening. But this dropped in me. And in this day and age, we, we use the terminology as if it's a download. But at that time, we didn't have the word download. This is in 98, yeah, about 1998. And so then I started speaking, and as I spoke, I felt power surge through me, and more words came and flowed, and there was this visible demonstration of everybody being touched by the power of God, and the school principal behind me almost fell out of her chair. I mean, just the power of God was on there. And after this whole thing, I got up saying, what just happened? The power that flowed through me left this huge, massive impression on me as I've tried to figure this out. Even though within the hour I was out to lunch with my friends, this made a huge impression on me. That same year, I was 17 years old. So fast forward just a, a, a little bit. I was 17 years old and I got sick over one weekend. At first I thought I had had the stomach flu, but soon I was hallucinating and I was severely sick. After a few days, I told my mom that I, I didn't think that it was the flu. I didn't think that um, after, yeah, about three or four days, I was like, mom, I don't think this is the flu. And I, I was hallucinating. This is some crazy stuff. These things had never happened before. And right after I told my mom this, she received a phone call from a friend. And her friend said she honestly didn't know why she was calling. And I'm, I remember sitting there on the couch, just holding my stomach. I got a blanket wrapped around me. And my mom started explaining my symptoms to her friend. And her friend's name was Doris. And Doris said, stop right there. That sounds like appendicitis. Take Jared immediately to the, do to the doctor. Now, this was divine. This was a divine setup. Amen. So looking back now, I know that this was God's intervention on my life. I wasn't serving him, but he was working around me. And even though I was living for the moment in drugs and alcohol and the lifestyle that comes with it, he was still speaking. The emergency appendectomy revealed that my appendix had burst. So I spent five days in hospital, but it was in the hospital. I felt the hand of God on my head. There was power. There was love. There was grace that flowed through me from head to toe. And supernaturally, I knew when people were coming to come visit me or when they were on the elevator about to come into my room for a quick visit. And there was a moment where uh, one of my brothers, his name was Elias, he came by and he had relapsed into drugs himself, some really hardcore drugs. And he, he'd been, he'd gone through rehab and uh, he was clean for a little bit, but then he fell and he backslid. And then um, he, he got a young woman pregnant and these were all things that my family had to navigate while he pretty much left home and disappeared. We didn't know where he was for months, but here I'm in, at in the hospital and he came walking into the room and I started crying as soon as I saw him come through. But then I felt this hot substance pour over my head and electric power of God surge through me. And I started prophesying. I started speaking with conviction and, and the power that's flowed out of me as I, I felt the power of God surging through me. Even now I could feel electricity in my fingertips just talking about this. It, it made him kind of fall back into his chair as he was blown away by what was taking place. And, and the truth penetrated his heart. And then he started talking to the parents again. He came over, they started navigating uh, the, the things that were taking place, especially with the birth of uh, what would be his, his only son. And uh, you know, in the hospital, 
I'd had this pocket New Testament, this Gideon pocket New Testament that I couldn't get enough of. While I'm he healing, I would open up this pocket New Testament. I could feel my spirit get excited. I could feel my spirit soar and, and grow because that the scripture is living. It's true. It's active. It, and it's words that were truth and life to me. And I could not shake these impressions and these encounters off me. I knew that God was doing. And even though I, I kind of went back into some of my bad habits for a few months, God was getting a hold of me. So within about six to seven months, I quit my old life cold turkey. I mean, I it was a crazy, crazy thing that, that we'd experienced, especially that summer but God was getting a hold of me. I turned my back on my old life and I went to youth with a mission in Kona, Hawaii and, and not knowing what to do. I mean, I quit everything cold Turkey from the moment I got on the plane, just that was that there were some demonic things I had to walk through within a few weeks, some deliverances I had to go through, but um, I, I went wholeheartedly into God. And it was tough the first couple months in YOM, getting clean, getting sober, going through the demonic stuff, the deliverance that I needed to do, and then receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the most incredible experience of my life. That was so awesome. Like it was completely life changing. It was the most incredible thing of my life. I love the Holy Spirit. So everything that I talk about comes from a spirit, Holy Spirit empowered approach, whether it's the prophetic, whether it's deliverance, discerning of spirits, it comes from knowing and understanding who the Holy Spirit is and how he baptizes and fills people and empowers people. So I've got a passion for Jesus. I've got a passion for the wonderful Holy Spirit. And I know that life has its challenges because uh, a little bit more to my story, within a few years, a year and a half or so, my brother Elias had died tragically, and and um, I'd only been clean and sober a year and a half, not two years, uh, but on fire for Jesus. But I decided to run towards Jesus through the pain, through the grief, you know. And then um, a few years later, I was married, happily married, and then walked through some ministry things, and then uh, some ministry trials. Even went to the Marine Corps for a little bit, went to a couple of combat deployments, and then uh, left that in order to uh, jump back into ministry, but also receive healing for PTSD and a number of different things. So it's been a long process, but now I'm here today to encourage people that God can speak to you, God can speak through you, and the Holy Spirit has a plan for you. And, and the focus of entry-level prophecy, and what I believe is the foundation of all prophecy is love for God, love for others, love for God. That's the greatest commandment, love for God, love for others. And then um, the prophetic is to encourage comfort and edify for it's for the strengthening. It's for encouraging It's for comforting as first Corinthians 14 verse three says that uh, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening encouragement and comfort and and i think that this is on the basic level now even on the basic level we could get specifics we could get specifics on, on you know sometimes we could even get names and, and things like that like some very specific stuff some very strategic insights and most of that's really to pray for and pray into but if we all have a relationship with jesus we can hear god's voice one way or another. An entry-level prophecy can be done by any of God's kids in any place at any time of his choosing. Prophecy is simply hearing God's voice and speaking what he's saying. Hearing God's voice and speaking what he is saying. So it, it the prophetic needs to flow from our time in his presence, in our, in our time with his Holy Spirit. And then as we 
carry on conversation with him in our personal time, our quiet time. We hear his voice in those places, in that place, in the secret place. And that's where we learn how to prophesy. I mean, when, when I was going through my, my grief and my pain in the year 2000, after my brother died, I ran into the secret place and he would tell me prophesy the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God would tell me to prophesy to the wind. He would tell me prophesy to the north. He would tell me, he'd show me things. He'd say, what do you see? And I'd have a conversation with him and I'd tell him what I'm seeing. And this was all uh, training for where God has me now. And it all started in the secret place. So um, the purpose of, of entry-level prophecy is to encourage, comfort, and edify. And it's to be grounded in uh, the presence. It's to be grounded in God's love. And it's to know that you can hear God's voice and you can prophesy. So if you have a relationship with Jesus, you can hear his voice. Uh, Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So if you can hear his voice, then you can be used by God to speak what he's telling you about someone else. When you look at that person lovingly, when you look at that person trying to get God's love for them, that's something that, that I, I like to do with my friends is we'll be out in town. We'll be, whether I'm with my friends at a coffee shop or I'm shopping with my wife or whatever it is, running errands. I like to look at people and say, Jesus, will you show me how much you love them? Then I'll say, Jesus, what would you like to tell them? And Jesus will open the door. He'll, he'll give you an opportunity uh, if he wants you to prophesy over this person, or if he wants you to encourage them and comfort them and, and edify them. So uh, entry-level prophecy is for edification, encouragement, comfort. And then later through this mentoring, through this live coaching, you know, we, we could discuss things about the advanced level prophecy as I know some of you have probably had dreams and visions and perhaps you have a growing prophetic ministry, whether in your local church or, or somewhere, or whether you're part of an intercessory prayer group. Uh, but, um, you know, not everybody can grow in a prophetic ministry, but then some people will grow into the office, the fivefold office of prophet, which is part of the fivefold ministry gifts of Ephesians 4, 11 through Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, which is in submission with the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But if you're called to the prophetic ministry or to the prophetic office, there is a high price. There's a sacrifice and there's a call in order to advance into those levels. And it's a mature uh, maturity process that may take years. And there's a, a, a lot of different things that take place. Not everybody has the same experiences. Not everybody goes through the same process, but everybody in those ministries pays a high price. They pay a sacrifice. There is a call for those, those levels, but it begins here at the entry level, which begins and starts rooted in love, grounded in the present, spending time with God. So I want to encourage everybody, spend time with him, prioritize that time with him. I know for me, I need to schedule things in my calendar. Okay. If it's in my calendar, it's going to get done. <laughs> okay. So even my time with God, whether it's an hour or two or whatever it is, or whether it's five minutes, it needs to be in my calendar. Amen. So, uh, I want to I want to encourage us that look at people through the eyes of love. If you went through lessons one or two, you know, it really emphasized the foundations of love. God's love, God's love for you. I really wanted people to have a revelation of how much God loves them so that they can have that revelation and look at other people through God's eyes of love. And so when you look at a barista, a cashier, a waitress, a cousin, whoever it is that, that you want to share a word of God to, you need to be grounded in love. You know, um, this is something that had taken me a number of years to kind of learn in and, and grow in. I mean, when I was younger, I'll just be honest, I wasn't as wise as I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned a lot, okay? I really did learn a lot. Uh, I wasn't as tactful as I probably should have been. 
but I've grown in love and I've grown in wisdom and I've grown in tact. Okay. I think we can all kind of realize that. I mean, now that I'm 40 years old, you know, I, I'm, I've relaxed in a number of areas. Okay. Hey man. Um, but start a conversation with a person that you're looking at, start a conversation, be conversational with them. And while you're kind of like sitting back in the spirit, resting, just being at peace, you know, you're talking to the barista, the cashier, you're talking to an employee, whatever. You're talking to the Walmart greeter, wherever it is that you're at. Just step back in peace and ask Jesus, how much do you love them? Will you show me how much you love them? And then will you show me something to encourage them with? And God opens the conversation. And then there's a point where you can ask them the question, hey, does this make sense to you? And it, maybe it's a... Uh, an encouraging Bible verse that popped into your head, or maybe it was an image or maybe a thought that, you know, this wasn't your thought, but you knew it was from God. You know, this, this thing just kind of dropped into your lap as you're having a conversation with this person. You ask this person, Hey, does this make any sense? And they'll say, well, yeah. And they could say why, or they could even say, well, no, not really. But I've also had it where they're like, well, no, that doesn't make sense. And then later they come back, like, actually it does. <laughs> So I always ask, ask for feedback, but if, if I'm talking to someone, uh, if I'm prophesying over someone, I appreciate feedback. I ask for it because I don't want to just be like, you know, here's a prophesy over them. And then I just leave it at that. I want to know, Hey, what did God do in this moment? Even if they don't know Jesus, if they don't know Jesus, his presence still hits them and spirit picks up on spirit. I can't count how many times people have said, are you reading me right now? Are you a psychic? What, what is this? They know this. And it's like, well, this is from Jesus. And I'll explain the difference between, you know, the psychic realm, which is the soul and the demonic, and then the, the realm of Jesus, like the prophetic, this is the real deal. Amen. So uh, I'd like to share a story real quick of, uh, so for a while I had a side hustle. I think all of us have had different side hustles to bring in a little extra income. So I was doing a ride share for a while, ride sharing, uh, driving for, you know, one of those things you, you get the app and then people start messaging it or they, you know, schedule rides and you pick them up and you drop them off for some money and some tips. So, and actually it was during this COVID season, like in this community, you know, there was very few drivers and I was making a good amount of money ride sharing during that time they told me hey i had to wait an hour for you thank you so much like you're the only driver and i was like well i'm not afraid of covid i got jesus i'm i'm running with jesus and i also knew that god was going to use the ride share for his glory so there was one time that i picked up this guy who was obviously from the navy and so i picked him up and while i'm kind of sitting there i've always got my worship music going i mean it's my vehicle and uh, they'll, they'll have to listen to my music. So I've got Christian radio, Air One playing. And that's for me just to know, hey, God, I'm, I'm rocking it with Jesus. I'm going to spend time in the presence. I'm going to pick these people up. And uh, I'm, I'm in the spirit in order to speak to them if God wants me to. So this Navy guy gets in my vehicle. And this flash, what I call a flash, kind of pops up in my, in my vision, in my eyes. I could see it, but I also know it's kind of in my mind. So this flash of a horse went through my mind. So I asked this young man, hey, I, I, and I said this, I said, I know this may seem to be coming from left field, but do you happen to love horses or work with horses? And this is what the guy said. He said that he loves horses and that his stepmom works with horses, that she trains them. And after he responded, the Lord gave me more information and I prophesied into his life. And he asked this, he said, how did you know? And I explained, Jesus loves you and that he supernaturally gave me the information to show you that he loves you. When I started dropping him off, he said that the words I spoke to him that night made his night. He said it made his day and made his night and that he was walking away blessed. Now, I don't know where his heart was with the Lord, but I had the opportunity to tell him that Jesus loves him. I believe that that is entry-level prophecy in action, and all of us can do that as friends of God. 
so what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to do kind of um, an activation and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So thank you so much for being part of this, uh, this pilot program of the coaching, the mentoring uh, through entry level prophecy. So then we'll, we'll do an activation and then I'll open it up to a Q&A being uh, if you got any questions about anything that I talked about or anything about the questions or even um, thing, ways that God has spoken to you even. And, you know, how can we navigate and encourage you to uh, realize, hey, this was God or, you know, wh whatever situations that you've had to walk through with the prophetic. So since um, we're all just chilling together, hanging out, you know, close your eyes, if you will. Then look at Jesus knowing that you're his friend, that he's your friend, that he's your king. And if you have a prayer language, just praying that for like 20 seconds or so and ask him to speak to you. So pray in tongues for about 20, 30 seconds or so. And then once you're done praying in tongues, just receive whatever he wants to show you, whatever he, he wants to reveal to you or drop into your spirit. So if we could do that for about 30 seconds. Amen. Amen. So, um, what did God show you? You could, um, yeah, raise your hand real quick, or you could just unmute yourself and let's see what Jesus just did. Yes, Lynn. Jared, my biggest difficulty is getting out of my head. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was really helpful for me when you said just kind of lean back and rest. And I felt like that's what what Jesus said that, come on, we'll do this together. Hmm. You know, in because I get so up in my head thinking, thinking, thinking that I think I block my ability to hear. Does the ability to hear improve? over time yes i was that's what i wanted you to say <laughs> <laughs> yes it does so i i personally it it flows out of relationship it flows out of time in the presence now i i know that we've all get busy things happen um you know the the world does what it does you know but, and we could easily get distracted you know um and we could easily uh not nurture that relationship with him like we should, but he still talks to us. You know, he still loves us and he's still pursuing us. But um, honestly, that's why just for me, it's like, it needs to be prioritized knowing, you know, because there are some people who they might spend three months and all they did was pray for three months, like eight, nine, 10, 12 hours a day. Like that's three months. And then they, you know, God does amazing things. They walk out of that anointed, but then they carry an anointing with them for a couple of years or so, but then they burn out because they're still operating on the old oil when it's just like, you know, in the scripture, the oil and the lamps, you know, you, you got to fill up the oil in your lamps. You got to have that filled up and, you know, so the oil will burn and you keep filling it up. You know, there's, um, I know, especially in this last year, there were a lot of, there was a lot of talk about the virgins and the oil and, you know, the bridegroom coming and, you know, things like that. So I believe if that's in the context of prayer, you know, just, Hey, be prepared for 
for him coming. And that's through prayer. That's through spending time with him. That's through waiting on him. And in that quiet time in the secret place, it's also not just him ministering to us, but it's us ministering to him. You know, we, we just need to adore him. We just need to worship him and, and soak in him. And, you know, and then that anointing that will care, it will be fresh, you know? So the more time we spend with him, it's just kind of common sense. <laughs> he'll speak to us more and he'll, it's like, a, it's like a friend, you know, like lesson three was on friends of God. You know, the more time we spend with a friend, you know, we start picking up their mannerisms. We start kind of, you know, knowing what they want, knowing what they need, knowing, you know, their moods, all that, right? Like that's what, that's what friends do. And uh, we, we start getting more, it becomes deeper, more bonding, you know, the more time we spent with them, you know, and, and God's the same way, you know, he, he loves everybody. Um, he loves all his kids. But there is something just about the more time you spend with him, there's something, you know, and I don't know, theologically speaking, like he, it's not testing, but there is something where there's a point where you could step into more favor. And that's kind of, uh, it's still a mystery. I'm a theologian and I still don't understand all of theology. <laughs> okay. I got a couple of degrees in this. And sometimes I'm like, okay, how does this work? you know, where he loves you just as much as he loves me. But then some of his kids have more favor because not because they worked for it, but because whatever the process was that they went through, they passed. <laughs> you know, that's some interesting stuff. So well, I think I don't struggle so much to hear in the secret place or even in intercessory prayer in a, you know, in a church setting, it's more, like you said, um, in a social setting or something, it's, le it's way less frequent. And I, I think maybe it's, I don't know, social pressure or my, you know, my own self-criticism. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, are you asking for advice in social situations? Like, You just go for it. Uh, you know what? I, I just take a risk, you know, like um, even if I'm not feeling it. Okay. Cause there are times where it's like, you feel it, you know, it like, Hey, let me encourage this person. And sometimes I'm intentional. Like I want to encourage that person right there. Like, um, and there is something I was telling my, my bride this the other night, I was like, there's something about asking God specifically. Now, when it comes to just asking, so like, there's something about, hey, if I want to see someone receive the baptism with the Spirit, I need to ask God to do it so that I see it happen. If I want to see people set free deliverance, I mean, like for me, I start kind of having these understandings and these knowings beforehand. Okay, like, like hey, I know I'm going to have a conversation. Okay, let just I'll, I'll just share this. Like, I knew the things I was going to say on my recent Steve Green podcast episode, I knew it just dropped this last week. Uh, it was spontaneous. They called me. They're like, Hey, Jared, can you do this in five minutes? I said, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's do it. I you know, just on the fly. But six months ago, I knew the things that we were going to talk about. So it was like, you, you get this knowing for me, I get this knowing I'll pray into it and I'll, I'll just take the steps in that direction and God opens the doors and then in the moment I realize, oh, I'm in the middle of God's will. <laughs> you know, if that makes any sense, like you just kind of know, like, like say with the, the upcoming seminar, okay. Like, like you just know, okay. You kind of can see it beforehand. You kind of understand it beforehand, but you pray into it. And then you, for me, it's like, I'll partner with God Okay, like say if like, like for some reason I, I've, I've ministered in deliverance. I've done a lot of deliverance off and on over the years. 
But as, as I told my wife, we've had a couple conversations recently where, where it looks like we might be having doing deliverance here real soon. But I told my wife, because just through conversation that of people that she knows, and I was like, well, this is interesting because I've been kind of asking God for a deliverance. Now, I'm not saying I, I want to cast demons out of someone just to cast demons out of someone. I want to cast demons out of someone so that they're free, you know, because there's a difference. There are deliverance ministries where they just, you know, they'll go for it and it's a show. But it's like, no, no, no. For me, it's got to be through love, but it's also this knowing and then asking if I could participate in it. And then it just kind of happens, you know. So in a social setting, Lynn, I, th I know I went off on a rabbit trail, I guess, but, you know, like just sometimes you, you got to prime the pump, you know, like, um, like for me, uh, sometimes like I just got to do it. And then the, the conversation opens or, um, you know, there, there used to be like, oh, that's, that's not God. That's just you. Okay. Well, how do you know it's not God if you didn't ask the person, you know, like, Hey, does, does this make any sense to you? Does baseball, this is coming, you know, like, I don't know you, I've never met you before, but does baseball mean anything to you? Like, they're like, Oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm an avid coach or something, you know, like then God gives you that information. Like just for me, you know, like he'll give you the, he could start giving you a phrase. It's kind of like speaking in tongues. A lot of people say, Hey, he gave me a small phrase that was two or three words and it flowed from there. You started speaking it out and it just started flowing more and more. It's like the prophetic, like the first time I ever prophesied, we are the awakening. And then it flowed into like a, and I was sitting there speaking. I was able to control it, but I was, I was the one speaking, but the, the words just kept coming. Like, it was kind of like a best way I could describe it was I received the information. I took the step of faith and spoke. And then as I continued speaking, I felt something just kind of merge, you know, call it a river into, into my mind or something and it merged. And I'm receiving the words as I'm speaking as I'm speaking them simultaneously. Uh, and it was still me speaking. I still had control. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it could start with a phrase. It could start with, you know, um, an image, uh, just a thought, you know, and just go for it. And then you'll see what God does. Okay. Any, anybody else with a question? Or uh, what did God do through you in that activation? We got Chuku and Terry, and then it uh, looks like Shirley had to bow out for an appointment, but that's all good. All right, Chuku, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. How are you doing? Great, great, great. Okay. So got it. What did God yeah. do in you, or what, what question do you have? Uh, well, no, I don't really have a question, but I just got, uh, for the activation, I just got a word. And, it's, and God, I say, I love you. Uh, you are the apple of my eye. That's my word. Oh, so good. Yes. That's so good. Yeah. Love that. Love that. And then, you could even take that activation and you could go do that in public. You know, when you go out in public, okay, yeah. like, so, you know, just, uh, I, I give my kids a lot of different activations and then I put them in a lot of my resources. But yeah, I mean, that is encouraging, that is comforting, that is edifying, and it reflects the fruit of the spirit, which is love. So yeah, that's awesome. Hello. Yeah, Terry, what's up? Um, when I got the vision, the first thing I, every time I close my eyes and um, look for Jesus, I always see his smiling face. And tonight when we did the activation, um, he gave me a picture of a rainbow and a bunch of butterflies, which I'm not really sure what it meant. And I didn't take the time to ask him, which I normally would. But since we were moving on, I 
I didn't take the time. Well, let's let's take it now because because here for me uh, during the activation, I saw like daffodils or something. I'm not a flower guy. Okay, I I'm not a gardener. I don't have a green thumb. <laughs> okay, but I saw daffodils. So uh, let's let's piece piece this together as a group. So you you saw rainbow rainbow. And a bunch of butterflies flying around. A bunch of butterflies. And maybe, see, we, we see in part and we prophesy in part, right? Some Sometimes, especially as we're, we do groups, you know, someone can have one piece of the puzzle and someone has the other piece of the puzzle. And then you put them together and you get to see the full image. So I'm, I'm thinking that what I saw, because I was in that activation, I was like, okay, this, I don't think this applies to me, but let's put that. So I saw flowers, I saw daffodils and, and you saw that. So does that make sense to anybody here in this group? Or can someone put that together and say what maybe they hear God saying? So I think Lynn, you have to, I'll ask to unmute. Okay, I missed. <laughs> um, I am a gardener and all of those things are all renewal um, because daffodils are some of the very first flowers that come up in the spring as things are coming back to life and butterflies are completely transformed um, I don't know if you know but in a chrysalis they dissolve completely into a liquid. You can open it and pour it out. They completely are transformed and renewed in the chrysalis into a butterfly. Go from completely earthbound to, uh, in the case of some of them, flying miles high and thousands of miles. And then the rainbow we know is a full spectrum of light, of visible light, but it's also that symbol of the earth is now dried and renewed after the flood. Amen. So, yeah. oh, Chuka, yeah. Yeah, can I, I don't know when, I, when I'm crying, but I, I think something just came into my mind. Because um, talking about butterfly and flowers, in, in, in plant biology, we know about pollination. And when there's pollination, then you think of something coming up, fruitfulness. So that's my, where my own thinking is going to, fruitfulness. Mm. Because when there's pollination, you're thinking of uh, the seed coming up and all the so growth of fruitfulness. That's the way I'm, I'm thinking about it from the message that I got too. So I don't know whether it makes any sense. Oh, I think it does. So as Lynn had said, as, as Chuku had said, how many of us feel, are we encouraged as we could be stepping into a new season? Maybe it's springtime. Yeah. We're being transformed. We're being renewed. Uh, let's just be real. 2020 was a little, little rough. Beginning of 21 was a little insane but we've got the promises of God and we're stepping into renewal. We're stepping into life. We're stepping into uh, a new season. Now I know what the prophets have been saying. They, they're saying we stepped into a new era, a completely new era. Okay. But for me, I'm encouraged knowing that, that thank you, Lynn and Chuku for being part of the interpretation of this. Uh, because I'm encouraged, hey, yeah, I need to know we're stepping into something new. We're stepping into a fullness, fullness. We're stepping into a renewal. We're stepping into spring, okay? Like, because we all know viruses come and go, okay? And seasons come and go. But God can use us through those seasons. But um, I do prefer the spring and I do prefer the summer compared to fall and, and winter. Me too. Just being real. <laughs> Amen. 
So I hope you guys are encouraged. So yeah, L let me know what you guys thought of this. Thank you so much for being part of this, um, this pilot program. We've got, uh, thank you for coming live on here. And um, then you will all receive a link to the video and for the students who are going through the e-course but can't make it live as like I see we've got Shirley from Malaysia couldn't jump in. Uh, she jumped in briefly, but then different time zone, you know, all the students will receive the link so that they could watch this um, added to the e-course. But um, I think this will be every Sunday. So this was the first of three. So then next Sunday and then the, the following after that. And then um, the last Sunday of March, I'm taking my bride out. But um, I would love to have some feedback and uh, about the e-course itself and about these activations and what God's doing through this. So uh, go through the first couple lessons, lessons one, two, and three of entry level prophecy. If you haven't yet do the activations and then share some testimonies as to what God did in you or what God did through you uh, as you know, that will have activations um, on prophesying over people and then um, I'm, if I, I will also send out, if you don't have it already, we have like five prophetic activations, a, a PDF download. And I'll send that out on this, this email with a link for this. So then say this week, you've got mon Monday through Friday, you could do one of these activations a day. And you could also do it for the next three weeks, like every day, if you'd like, because I don't have 30 of them, but <laughs> we've got five. But um, do those and then we'll, we'll see what God did through those. And um, then also bring your questions to uh, our live coaching, live Q&A. Cool. I have a question. Yeah, man. Do you have, is there somewhere where I can leave a review for the whole course that would be helpful to you? Do you so, uh, leave a review? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, email my wife. Okay. Info at firebornministries.com. Uh, yeah, email that because, I mean, we're, we're always trying to improve, always learning. Um, I think. Well, I was thinking like a, a public review. Is there, does Charisma Pod uh, or wherever it came from, is is there a review capability? Like yeah, that? so we could we could add the, we could send it to David Manning of Charisma and add um, yeah a review. We could add them because honestly, that's that's something we'd like to have. Okay. Is you know, hey, I went through the course and this is what God did. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll add those and um, David, you know, sent me some some of the people that registered tonight like just a few hours ago so you know he sent me their info of people that that purchased the course and stuff and you know we, we love her love for the reviews because we're always looking at expanding and i love coaching people i love encouraging people and i mean you know this i love to activate people <laughs> all right so lynn would you close us in prayer would you mind closing us in prayer and then call it night I'll be happy to. Thank you. Our Father, we thank you for the heart you put in Jared. We thank you even for the details of where he grew up that his neutral accent is so clear and easy to understand. I thank you that we can, for this time in history where technology allows us to connect with our brothers, Terry and Chuku. How amazing that is. Father, would you plant this seed, as Chuku has said, and how that begins the growth. Plant this seed in all the students in this course that we would be part of a new era, of that era of bringing the love of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit would you make us sensitive to your voice? Would you make your voice so clear, especially for the beginners to build confidence? Would you use us in the way you designed us to, to love this world into seeing you for the love that you are? Multiply our efforts greatly 
as we participate in this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. I will hang out a little while longer if anybody wants to chat. Uh, other than that, you know, free to go. Looking forward to talking to you guys next Sunday, same time, eight o'clock Eastern. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome, Chuku and Terry. Thank you so very much.